So um, basically since graduation, I've been doing my fair trade thing. Um, and as many of you may know, fair trade is a market-based approach to poverty. We work with companies to source their products in a way that help lift farmers and workers out of poverty. And so in that, we're trying to create a value proposition that not only um, supports farmers and workers around the world, but also supports the companies and the consumers that are buying those products. So I spend a lot of time pitching the business model and the, and, and the, the value proposition of fair trade to companies all across the country. And we're you know, working not just in coffee and tea, but in 40 different product categories, from coffee to fish to manufactured products. Inevitably, uh, one of the biggest challenges and obstacles that I encounter is what I think of as the mentality of trade-offs. This notion that persists in the business community that profitability on the one hand and sustainability and responsibility on the other are somehow at odds with each other. And that you can have one or the other, but you can't have both. The notion that if you want to do right in the world, if you want to do right in your supply chain, somehow that's going to come at a hit to your margin and your profits. And look, I, I meet with hundreds of business leaders every year, and they are, almost without exception, good people. Like us, they, want, they care about the planet. They care about the workers in their supply chain. They care about climate change. They don't want to have to check their values at the door when they come to work every day, nor do we. And yet, this, this mentality of the inevitability of trade-offs limits so many business leaders from driving sustainability into their business models. So um, I want to tell you a story about someone who inspires me, someone who has overcome the trade-off, overcome the mentality of trade-off. His name is Jim Brett. Jim is the, the president of West Elm. You may know of West Elm. It's part of the William Sonoma Group. It's a billion dollar company. They sell rugs, they sell furniture, great products. And when Jim came in to lead the company uh, a number of years ago, one of the first things he wanted to do was make sure that the workers in their global supply chain were making a living wage. And so he tasked his people with analyzing that and figuring that out. And they, the, the supply chain team at West Elm came back to him eventually and said, can't do it. There's no way that we can ensure that those workers are making living wage and continue to be a profitable company. It just can't be done. The mentality of trade-offs, one or the other, but not both. So I met Jim shortly thereafter, and we agreed to go to the field together. And so two years ago, we went to Vietnam and India, and we visited rug factories, we visited furniture factories, and we talked to workers. And it blew us away. I mean, it's tough. These workers that we met with are struggling to put food on the table, to keep their kids in school, to provide health care for their families, to provide decent housing for their families. They're grateful for the jobs, but the jobs are not providing a decent living. And yet, they didn't play the victim role. There was so much pride there. These are craftsmen. They, they, they are master craftsmen of rugs and furniture. And there was so much pride in their knowledge. There was so much dignity. Jim and I came away totally blown away by the experience, both by how compelling the poverty and the need is, but also by the sense that these craftsmen are not victims. They are quite possibly our partners in a common quest. So Jim came back, and he basically sent an order to his team and mine. You've got to figure this out. We're going to fair trade our factories. We're going to pay living wages. We're going to improve conditions in these factories. And y'all need to figure out a way to do it. And hopefully, it doesn't cost me my job. And so we got to work. We got to work, and we developed a program, and we put boots on the ground, and we started training in the factories. And West Elm started paying more money, and those workers started getting more money. And living, working conditions in the factories improved. Safety in the factories improved. And all of this was linked to productivity, and productivity started to go up. And retention started to go up. And quality claims started to go down. And so what we saw in the space of less than two years was a dramatic improvement in workers' livelihoods, at the same time that the firms themselves were showing all kinds of improvements in their performance indicators. In other words, it was good business. So from West Elm's perspective, there was a clear return on investment. They had a more secure supply chain. They, they had a more um, 
reliable supply chain, but they didn't stop there. They went to the consumer. They told the consumer the story about what they were doing with fair trade furniture and rugs. And guess what? The consumers rewarded them for it. They bought more of the product, even though it was priced a little bit higher. So sales went up. They started liking the company in social media. The brand and the reputation of the company started to rise. And so West Elm has become hugely successful with this program, and they've totally exploded this notion that there's a trade-off. They've proven that you can bake sustainability and responsibility into your business model and thrive. I, um, I had an amazing meeting yesterday, actually, with executives from Target, from the home goods division of Target. And they wanted to know how they can get fair trade into their factories. And they kept talking about West Elm. West Elm has become a point of reference. And so the story of Jim Brett, in my mind, is the story of how one leader can overcome the mentality of trade-offs and create a, a ripple effect of change that is affecting not just his company and all of the workers and communities that that company touches, but is also creating a ripple effect in the industry. So I'm out of time. I, um, I just want to close by saying we're blessed. We are all blessed for so many reasons, not the least of which is we live in a time where what we do, what we do with our time, what we do with our talent makes a difference. What we do makes a difference. And my invitation to you is to find the inspiration to think beyond trade-offs. Wherever you are, whatever you do, find the inspiration to think beyond trade-offs and become co-author of this, what I believe is this next great chapter in global capitalism in which people and planet and profit are coming together. Thank you.